Hey everyone, welcome and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be sketching and painting a street scene in Zurich, Switzerland. As usual, I will try to link all the materials that I use in this video down in the description below. So for today, I will be starting with a light wash of watercolor first before doing the ink outlines. So I am now getting a few colors ready first. This first color is for the green walls of the main building. I mixed terra verte with light red first and I tested it out and then I added some yellow ochre and then I tested it out again on paper. But I wasn't really sure about this color because I don't often use this color. So I left that first color and proceeded to the second color, which is a mixture of burnt umber, burnt sienna, and ultramarine deep. Before I started painting, I decided that the green mix just wasn't quite correct. So I decided to remix that one and because I thought that the first mix looked too yellow so I used mainly just terra verde plus some white for the new green mix. Now I'm going to start with a wet on wet wash and right now I'm brushing on a lot of water on that paper surface. So this paper does not deform as much as some other watercolor papers, but if you want it to stay flat, you can use some masking tape to tape up the sides or you can stretch the watercolor paper first. So here I have started painting that main building and essentially I'm just sketching with my brush and watercolor instead of using a pencil. So I'm getting a rough idea of the size and shapes of things. So doing a watercolor wet on wet wash first makes the edges come out really soft and the colors will also dry much lighter than this. So it's okay if it doesn't look that pretty at this stage. This technique of blocking out the shapes first is done with many other mediums, such as gouache and acrylic. You don't necessarily have to start with a pencil sketch, and you can instead start with some shapes and to build your subject from there. However, with watercolor, you need to be careful to not overwork the first layer because watercolor is more transparent and subsequent layers won't be able to cover up any mistakes unlike with gouache and acrylic where you can correct mistakes easily or redo certain areas just by layering fresh paint on top of dried paint. Some of the most simple watercolors can be the most beautiful and fresh paintings. I admire artists who are able to make it simple yet impactful, to not overwork their watercolors. It's a balancing act of controlling the watercolors and yet still being able to let it work its own magic. Right now I'm mixing light red and yellow ochre for the orange building on the right side. And before that I mixed that red color which is a mixture of vermilion hue plus rose mother. As you can see, the paper is already starting to dry on the right side. So you can see that the strokes have hard edges instead of soft edges like on the main building. So this happens a lot when I paint more slowly. So I don't 
worry about that too much. I just proceed and add some ultramarine to my brush that had the orange mix. And now I'm using that purple color, sort of purple brown color to continue painting. And then I'm adding some more blue to the top for the roof. And after this, I'm going to soften those hard edges by using a wet, clean brush. All right, the first layer is dry, and now I'm going to start drawing the outlines. So I've been using this fountain pen a lot recently, and I used to only use fine liners. Then I switched to fountain pens, and I do find them more comfortable to sketch looser lines with. And I think they have more... Um, a more balanced grip and weight so they do feel more comfortable for me um, this particular pen is called a Lamy Safari and it has a medium nib and inside this pen um, I have this bulletproof or waterproof water resistant ink which is uh, of the brand Noodlers and you can find that in the links down below so the most important thing of course is to use water resistant ink so that um, later on when you paint with watercolor the ink does not flow or smudge um, but i do know um, there are some artists who use ink that is not water resistant so um, when they apply water or watercolor on top the ink blends in with the watercolor and th sometimes they use like purple um, ink and so that purple sort of bleeds into that watercolor and it, it, it makes a very interesting effect so yeah that's something that you can try as well if you like it um, I personally have not tried that kind of sketch or paintings yet so I I might try that in the future, yeah. So the first layer of watercolor is acting as a sort of guide for these outlines that I'm doing. So we already have the general big shapes in the rough position that I want. So I'm just trying to follow that a little bit when I'm sketching with my pen. And one thing you may also notice is that the watercolor is going out of the lines. And we also have some abstract shapes at the bottom of that building too, which I find interesting. It's something people might not expect, you know. And the lines here are all quite loose and crooked and no heavy lines. So this may be... A building and it's not a living thing but it has some life in it and you know what is life but a messy sometimes unexpected yet beautiful thing
Before sketching something, to estimate the size and position of each element, I do these gestures with my pen. And maybe you have already noticed that, just to make it easier to imagine those elements before drawing them. And it's not a perfect science, I always say this, and it's not perfect. And drawing repetitive elements like these awnings, you might get them in different sizes. So sometimes I do use a pencil to do some marks to even things out first, but it really depends on my mood. I was not feeling um, like I was not really in the mood to follow the rules that day, and I guess it does show. In this drawing, I got caught up sketching all the little plants or foliage and details at the bottom for quite some time. And I think sketching trees and bushes is actually really therapeutic for me because you can really be free with your strokes and create these um, funny shapes. And also you can do all sorts of experiments with loose line work to create an impression of different plants. I enjoy the sound of pen on paper, and if anything, that is a big reason why I like traditional art. So this part here will have no music, and 
I hope you enjoy the sounds of sketching. So far, this piece is turning out quite detailed and there are lots of windows that I still need to draw. So I did spend around three hours in total on this piece and most of the time was spent on these outlines and I didn't spend that much time um, painting with watercolor. And I know many of you prefer real-time videos, but three hours is a pretty long video. Well, either way, do let me know if you prefer shorter, straight-to-the-point videos or longer videos in the comments down below. So here you can see how I made some marks to space things out a bit. So the windows are approximately the same distance apart and are of the same height and width. But of course, some of them look came out looking a little lopsided. 
but it's all good. They don't bother me too much. Um, but sometimes, though, I do draw something which is overly crooked, and it does bother me. So you do need to find that delicate balance between、um, too much and not enough. So balance is the key, but it's a key you have to keep looking for. And sometimes you lose it, and nothing works. But eventually, you will find it. It just takes some time and patience. And another thing you may have already noticed is that there are these grills on the balconies where I did these fun little scribbles, which don't really make sense in real life. I know, but it somehow. Does appeal to me in a sketch like this. So instead of drawing how the actual grills look like with a sort of floral motif, I just scribbled some curved lines. And in these kinds of sketches, we're just capturing an impression of something. And it's like the tree doesn't look like that in real life, but people will interpret that as a tree. So. Being bold and doing experiments with different ways of sketching things is fun, and it lets out that kid in us who was never afraid of the blank page, the kid who created freely without fear. Here I'm also doing some loose scribbles for the windows on that. Wall at the side, which is not our main focus, so we can be more loose and suggestive. So sometimes you just need to draw a single line, and then let the viewer fill in the blanks themselves. So before sketching the rest of the buildings, I decided to sketch a little character, and to make sure I get the pose and expression right, I'm using a mechanical pencil first. And there are a couple of people in the reference photo in a nice position, so I'm going to sketch her in that same position, with about the same height as those people in the photo. But I want、um, my character to be looking up at this building, or this—it's a—it's actually a hotel in Zurich, and maybe I want her looking up and、um, as if she has found the place that she is looking for. So I'm adding a little bit of story to this piece. Sketching a really small character is not easy because the smallest little stroke can change the whole expression and the whole pose. So I'm being really careful with this one, and I don't often draw people with lots of details in urban sketches because they're often very 
very small. And it's often just a loose sketch of someone walking or something. So that's something that I'm trying to work on a little recently. I'm trying to add people or characters who tell a story. All right, now we are going to sketch those two buildings on the opposite side of the road. And as you can see, I'm doing really loose shapes and lines because again, if it's not the main focus, I want it to have less details because also these buildings are further away too. So you can't really see that much detail anyway. And the main building has so many things going on and it has so much detail and I think sketching these two buildings um, in the background in a loose less detailed way really complements the first building giving this piece some balance.
So I like how our main character is looking, but the streets do look a little bit empty. So I did a loose sketch of a person walking down the street in the background. And I also added some other finishing touches and just some loose strokes here and there. Alright, so now we are done with the outlines. I'm going to continue painting with watercolor. So I'm basically just adding the second and third layers of watercolor using almost the same colors as the first layer. So this first color is a mixture of vermilion hue plus rose matter and I'm using it to paint in these umbrellas and the red color in this piece is really important because many green things are present in this in this um, piece so we need the red color which is the complementary color of green to balance things out so besides that burnt sienna or a reddish brown also complements green so that's why of course we have lots of brown colored pots and you know wood colors do complement the green leaves so every chance that i get i'm going to add red or a reddish brown so that this piece hopefully comes out more balanced here i am also adding some yellow ochre for the wood and also later for the tops of those leaves on those bushes so it's a little bit like some sunshine is shining on these spots then after that i'm using terra verde plus yellow ochre to paint in all those bushes or plants Here I'm adding some viridian to my brush to paint in the shadows of the trees. This dark blue is a mixture of ultramarine deep and a little bit of burnt sienna and I'm using this color to paint in those stripes on the awnings and later on I will use the same color to paint in the window shutters. Thank you. 
So here we have again ultramarine deep plus a little bit more burnt sienna added to that mix. So it's a slight shift in that dark blue to a slightly grayer blue. And I'm filling in the bottom half of this building. Now at this point, I felt that the green walls were a little bit light, but I quite liked that soft color. So I just let the first layer of watercolor show through for the walls and I continued adding color and shadows and in the end I'm quite glad that I didn't add a second layer of green onto the walls because in my opinion it would have been sort of overpowering. So as you can see, I'm adding a little bit of cerulean blue to the windows and many windows reflect the sky. So leaving it gray like it was previously made it seem like a gray gloomy day. So adding some color to the windows did help to cheer things up a little bit. And if you look at the reference photo, the windows are all kind of dark, and yes, the sky shows us that it was, in fact, a gloomy day. So since we have the power to change that into a sunny day, why not, right? And since 
windows also reflect light. They do present a great opportunity for us to add color, like red or yellow, etc. So I'm able to bring those same colors at the bottom up into the space. And as I said before, it's all about balance. So later on in this painting, you will see that I bring those colors at the bottom up to the top. So at this stage, I am adding shadows and increasing the contrast. One of the most satisfying stages of a piece because you can really see it come to life. So we are almost done with this piece. I just painted in the main character using the same colors as before. So I'm sort of making sure that it feels like um, she fits into this scene. And I love how the paint from the red sweater sort of flowed down and blended with the blue paint of the pants. And I haven't mentioned this before but I have this paper on a stand so that I don't have to bend over and paint but the paint does um, flow downwards when it's wet so it's hard to paint like big washes with watercolor at an angle unless you want the paint to unless you do want the paint to flow downwards so usually I start by propping the paper up just a little bit with maybe maybe a pencil case then I might prop it up more when I'm doing the outlines and painting subsequent layers so right now I'm adding some finishing touches and filling in the colors and adding more shadows
All right, we are done. Thank you so much for coming along with me through this whole process. I really enjoyed sketching and painting this scene and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful to you. Thank you so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.